Famous Guitars Episode 6. I want to talk about this guitar right here for all you blues fans out there. This is B.B. King's Lucille guitar. Now, Lucille's beginnings, and there's a couple different iterations of this guitar I'm going to talk about in this video. The beginnings of Lucille dates back to 1949, uh, when King then in his early 20s was performing at a nightclub in Twist, Arkansas. That's right, Twist, Arkansas, like the song. It was a dead of winter, and everybody was dancing while he was playing, and the room was really cold. So what happened was, to heat the room back in those days, they used a big, what looked like a steel garbage pail, half filled it with kerosene, and lit the thing on fire. No kidding, that's how they heated the room. And there were a couple guys there that got into a fight of some kind, and there was a scuffle, and they spilled it on the floor, and it caught the whole place on fire. And everybody ran for their lives and ran out. Once King went outside, he realized he left his guitar inside. So what did he do? He went back inside to rescue his guitar as the building was burning around him and falling all around him. Well, subsequently, everybody, including the two men, not everybody, but the two men that were that started the fight had perished in the fire, uh, but King got out with uh, his guitar and found out that uh, the fight all began over this lady named Lucille. So, B.B. King thought, well, that was kind of a crazy thing that I did to go in there and rescue that guitar, so he named his guitar after the woman they were fighting after Lucille to remind him never to do that again. So, pretty interesting fact on that. It was actually a small bodied Gibson L30 archtop that he rescued. And he was particularly drawn to Gibson's, the semi hollow ES335 model in particular. And uh, that can be heard on his legendary 1965 recordings. Uh, but he started playing the Gibson ES355. And that remained BB's instrument of choice throughout uh, the early 80s when he collaborated with Gibson to create his own signature model known as the Gibson Lucille. Uh, the guitar was essentially a 355 outfitted with several modifications, some of them aesthetic, like the personalized Lucille headstock, uh, others more functional. King, who reportedly didn't like the F holes in the guitar, he would stuff them with rags a lot of times to reduce the feedback. So one of the iterations of the guitar, he said, you know what, just get rid of the F-holes, I don't want them anymore. So that's what Gibson did. So over the years, Gibson Lucille has been issued in a variety of iterations, including the limited edition King of Blues version, uh, with the ostentatious Super Lucille on the headstock. And in 2005, Gibson produced the 80th birthday model Lucille for the bluesman, which he uh, adopted as his main stage instrument until the summer of 2009 when it got stolen. That's right. And a few months later, the guitar trader and appraiser named Eric Dahl, that's D-A-H-L, came across a uh, that this very Lucille in a pawn shop in Las Vegas. So unaware of what he was holding in his hands, but curious about the unusual headstock stamp, Dahl contacted Gibson about the guitar. He was... Uh, a lot of dead-end inquiries, and he was notified that the instrument was not merely a Lucille approved by B.B. King, but rather King's actual Lucille that was stolen. Upon hearing this uh, guitar had been recovered, King met with Dahl and traded him a new Lucille um, for the prized 80th birthday model. So following the exchange, Dahl recalled that King told me, I hope I'd enjoy playing mine as much as he enjoyed playing his. So, the BB King Lucille guitar, fascinating history, fascinating guitar for a fascinating guitar player. You can learn more about this from the Rolling Stone article at www.rollingstone.com. Like, share, and follow for more famous guitars.